Good evening. Please sit down. Secretary Cesar Purisima, Greg Domingo, Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, Dr. Francis Chua, Mr. David Chua, Secretary Tito Ifardo, Attorney Miguel Varela, Mr. Seri Luis Ortiz Jr., Mr. Donald D., Mr. Alfredo Yao, Don Emilio Yap, Representatives Roy Leona, Nurana Saidula, Dax Kua, Governor Igot Petilla, mayors from different cities and municipalities of the Philippines, business leaders and attendees of the 37th Business Conference and Expo, honored guests, and may make special mention of my Uncle Tony Lopa and Mr. Susing Pineda, who arrived late. But I made it a point that I saw him, I saw them at today's uh, activities. Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It has been a year since I stood in front of all of you and shared the aspirations of a hundred-day-old administration. Back then, my task was to map out the reforms we intended to begin. Now, the improvements can be measured less by what was intended and more by what has been done. In the first year of our administration, I attended a number of inaugurations and groundbreaking ceremonies for new businesses, from power plants to shipyards, from hotels to IT parks. So many businesses setting up shop had me rushing to one inauguration event after another, giving me little time to rest. But I am not complaining. You can tire me more if you want to. Since And the only requirement is it amounts to something and not just photo opportunities. <laughs> Since we saw each other last, the Philippines has garnered four positive rating actions from credit rating agencies such as Fitch, Fitch's and Moody's and Standard & Poor's. Our country moved up 10 places in the World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Index. We are now at 75th place from 85th in 2010. Truly, these developments show us that our reforms and our focus on fostering a business climate conducive to growth are indeed taking effect. We are maintaining the momentum we have built from last year. But for the record, while the government has indeed worked hard for this, all of you here are equally deserving of praise and our thanks. That is why. That is why I made it a point to be here, so that as President of this country, I could express my deepest gratitude for all of your hard work. The work you do is doubly important now, because we are living in a world where economic assumptions seem to change almost overnight. This is a reflection of the uncertainty we are seeing in economies that were once pillars of growth, the European Union, America, or even Japan's. And these things are having an effect on growth all over the world. Even in countries like ours, export growth is slowing down, and remittance growth is down to single digits. There are many of us who feel uncertain, and that is natural. But I am here to tell you that our government is ready to deal with these problems. Fifteen months of fiscal prudence and taking the necessary steps to ensure that money is spent wisely have given us the wherewithal to decisively address the economic uncertainty we face today. Yesterday, I announced 72 billion pesos in new programs meant to provide stimulus to an economy affected by what's happening overseas. At least 6.5 billion pesos will go to our local government units who can pick from a menu of vital infrastructure or poverty alleviation projects. We're spending an additional 10 billion pesos to help with resettling and relocating informal settlers and families currently residing in danger zones, while 5.5 billion will go to infrastructure projects of the DPWH. We are also providing an additional 4.5 billion and 1.868 billion pesos to the improvement of the MRT and LRT lines, respectively. I would like to emphasize, however, that we are not doing this merely for growth's sake. We chose initiatives for this stimulus package that are either high-impact or anti-poverty projects that are easy to get to the ground so that Filipinos can feel the effects immediately. Our people are the ultimate beneficiaries here, and these projects are important because we know 
that through these, we can take significant steps towards alleviating poverty and addressing the needs of our countrymen. This stimulus program would not have been possible had it not been for prudent spending. Our critics call this underspending. But is it underspending when you save 20% of contract costs on infrastructure projects as Public Works and Highway Secretary Babe Singson has done? Is it underspending when you restructure your maturities so that you save 26 billion pesos in interest payments in a year? Is it? Is it underspending when you demand a work program from a regional director who asks for a bridge in his district? The evidence is conclusive. Fiscal prudence isn't underspending. It's the sensible thing to do. When we want projects to have work programs laid down before they are given funds, when we make sure that projects won't merely fuel growth, but also and concretely benefit the Filipino people, that is not underspending. It's proper, spends sensible spending. And that is what the government is supposed to do. The people who have exaggerated the impact of what they call underspending on economic growth must realize that what gave us the wherewithal to spend 72 billion pesos in new programs in the next three months is exactly what they've been criticizing all along. Let us look back to the lessons that this crisis teaches us. Other countries around the world are undergoing painful restructuring because they took in too much debt and are now hard-pressed to pay it back. It is precisely these problems that we have managed to avoid. We promised that we would treat taxpayers' money not as our personal kitty, but as funds of our people. We have been consistent. <laughs> we have been consistent with that, and we are now seeing the benefit. A government that can spend money in times of economic uncertainty. This is no different from what we have been trying to instill in government service since I entered the presidency. The transparency and accountability are the foundations of good governance and that I should lead by example. as the steward of the hard-earned and hard-gained funds of our people. One year after I stood here and shared with you some of our early initiatives along the straight and narrow path, I tell you, we have not strayed. We are working even harder now to bring the Philippines where it's supposed to be. Judging by your theme today, it is good to know that the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, along with all of you present here today, march alongside us as we face the challenges of the coming years. I know there will be times when we will face difficulties, but if we hold strong and continue working to the mutual benefit of your companies and our country, then I know we will succeed in creating a better Philippines, one that we can proudly bequeath to future generations. Thank you, good evening, and have a pleasant day.